I was looking for something Halloween-y to play this October, and since I do not do too well with actual scary games... No, Joe, you're killing us! <laughs> how did he get through all that? I don't know, I don't know how to get away from Oh, oh God. God, he's just like putting no. the gun in your no. face! No! No! <laughs> no. <laughs> how did he get the advantage here? I decided to go a different route and play as three tiny children trick-or-treating their way through a quest to save another tiny child dressed like a candy corn from goblins. Costume Quest was developed by Double Fine Studios way back in 2010, and it is what I would describe as a bite-sized RPG. Completing this game only took me about six hours, and I did my best to explore everywhere, including the DLC Grubbins on Ice. You start off your candy field journey as one of two siblings, Ren or Reynolds, who are both extremely eager to go collect some sugary treats from strangers. You pick between these two as your main character, and subsequently you choose a much harsher role for the other. I went with Ren on my playthrough. After picking a leader, you head out into the neighborhood of Auburn Pines and head over to some nearby homes in search of candy. At one of these homes, you are greeted at the door by a Rapudgian soldier named Gus. Gus surmises that Reynolds is a giant piece of candy and he kidnaps him. You chase and confront the Grubbin soldier just as he throws your brother over the massive scary looking gate, either from participating altruism or just the fear of parental discipline by not returning home with your sibling, you enter your first battle. For the first battle is only Ren battling Gus in her robot costume, which turns out is actually a giant mecha destroyer. They never really explain the lore or reason as to why these kids have access to crazy magical costumes, but I guess that's not really here nor there. Costume Quest has a turn-based battle system which incorporates timed button prompts for both offensive and defensive situations. Depending on what costume you are using, your prompt action will be one of a couple different possible options. You may have to wiggle the left stick around, press a button in the correct spot on a bar, or just hit a specific button right before attacking. The type of prompt doesn't change every time. The Statue of Liberty costume always makes you wiggle that left stick, and the robot always has you trying to time the perfect hit. With only three different options, I do wish this part of the battle could be expanded a little bit. As I progressed further into the game and obtained more costumes, I was expecting more types of prompts, but one of three was all you get. This is true of the DLC Grubbins on Ice too. There could have been one that was more like a combo system or maybe even make me wiggle that right stick once in a while. You still have to pay attention during battle or you'll miss the prompt, but the lack of variety can make this system go a little stale later in the game. Once you have used a normal attack twice in battle, you gain access to your costume's combat ability. For the knight, you can place a shield in front of a single ally to increase their defense for one hit. The Statue of Liberty heals the whole group and my favorite one came from the eyeball costume in the DLC, where you cut an onion in half and deal a watery cascade of damage to all the enemies in battle. This is what I used to determine what costume I would use for my characters during the game. With 11 obtainable costumes in the main game, not including 3 more in the DLC, you have enough variety to select a cool looking costume with combat abilities that fit your fighting style. I mean, you can have a party consisting of a pumpkin, unicorn, and an absolutely terrifying french fry monster which would allow you to revive and heal your party, stun enemies, and cut their HP in half using just 3 out of the 11 costume combat abilities. After you lay the smack down on Gus the Grubbin, a nasty witch named Drusilla appears and using her mighty witch powers engulfs you in a tornado and sends you about 15 feet away from her. If you were in the same room she would have harnessed the mighty power of the elements to teleport you to just the other side of it. Despite her weak teleporting powers, she did manage to take Ren's costume from her, leaving her powerless to stop Drusilla and save Reynolds. For about 30 seconds, then a nice black cat finds a costume pattern which shows Ren the three items needed to construct her robot costume again. And this is how most costumes are presented within Costume Quest. All constructible costumes have a pattern and three items needed to assemble. Not all costumes are unlocked via the story, and some can take a little exploration throughout the Costume Quest's three main areas. Nothing is really too hidden away, so you shouldn't have too much issue finding everything naturally if you just search around all the areas. 
Just make sure you seek out the talking scarecrow in each area to gain another piece of the pumpkin costume if you're trying to collect them all in your playthrough as this can probably be the easiest one to miss. Well, after you find the items needed to reconstruct your robot costume, you meet Everett, the second character of three to join your quest in saving Reynold and defeating Dorsilla. But to do so, Ren needs to get that big old scary gate open, and of course, it will open up when all the candy is gone from Auburn Pines, so it's time to go trick-or-treating. And this is where we get into the bulk of the main storyline that will have you trick-or-treating in each area to collect all the candy to open up the gate to the next area in your pursuit of Reynold. One of two things will happen when you knock on a door. A nice neighbor will answer and give you candy, or an enemy will answer the door and you will have to enter battle. In the main menu, you can see how many houses out of the total you have visited, and you should also notice that once a house has been visited, the lights will turn off. While you are visiting the neighborhood houses, there are also a couple of side quests and collectibles to help you along the way. No Halloween would be complete without a quick game of bobbing for apples with some strange man in the middle of a park. There's also six kids in each area that are playing hide and seek that are begging to be found. You also can find a couple children asking for help obtaining certain creepy treat cards, which are cards you get from completing battles. I collected all the creepy treat cards during my playthrough of Costume Quest, but I honestly never found out what the prerequisite for each specific card actually was. I guess it's neat to see a full collection, but besides that I didn't pay too much attention to these cards unless I needed a second copy of one to complete a card seeking quest. Now that you had visited all the houses in Auburn Pines, that gate that Reynolds was thrown over finally opens and we can continue in hot pursuit. Venturing through a graveyard, we eventually find Reynolds on a bus leaving Auburn Pines for the Autumn Haven Mall to drop off all the candy those Repugji and soldiers collected for Dorsilla. But before we can save Reynolds and stop the candy thieves, we are confronted by Bojan, our first boss battle. Normal battles in Costume Quest are very straightforward, and they don't usually require any actual strategy, but if you come into these boss battles ill-prepared, there is a solid chance that you will find yourself on the sad end of a defeated screen. With level 10 being the highest level you can hit in the main campaign, it is rare that you're going to find yourself under-leveled for fights, but a bad combination of costumes and battle stamps can leave you in a bad spot in the harder fights. What are battle stamps, you ask? They are stat-slash-boosters characters can equip to give you a little specific boost in battle. In each area, there is a child entrepreneur named Sally who will have some battle stamps she would love to trade you in exchange for all that candy you've been collecting. Candy isn't actually used for anything else in the game, so trade away. Battle stamps are the only way you can actually revive your characters in battle after they fall and thus you've actually obtained the unicorn costume. They also have some great offensive attributes like splash damage or a counterattack, but you can only equip one per character, so choose wisely. After Bojan and his megaphone are put down, you head over to Autumn Haven Mall, and surprise, surprise, the monsters have taken over. You have to explore a darkened back section of the mall where you assemble your first costume of this area, the Spaceman costume, which can illuminate the darkness while walking around so you can traverse new areas and get to the main part of the mall. Once here is where Costume Quest may begin to lose some players. If you've already played straight through and have completed all the quests in Auburn Pines, You've already been playing for maybe about one to two hours, and now that cycle is going to start over again. It's time to go around to the various shops in the mall and collect all the candy so that you can open the other big scary gate to move on to the next area of the game. There's another Bobbing for Apples minigame, there's six more kids that are hiding around the mall, and there are two more children looking for creepy treat cards. There are three new costumes to find, and Sally is back selling more battle stamps to beef up your chops as well. I'm not actually bugged by the repetition. If this was a 70 hour RPG with a big old world map and every city you went to had the same quests with only a few cursory changes, then yes, it would annoy me, but the jokes are still silly and I'm still having fun. As we continue through the mall, we eventually meet our third and final party member, Lucy. She's into science and she's trying to get to the bottom of this whole monster invasion thing, so naturally she's coming along with us. And now that we have a full party and have collected all the candy there is in the mall, it's time to venture through this giant goblin door that was apparently built in the back hallway of the mall. You know, and it's weird to me as I write this script that I find this demon gate odd, but I totally am fine with the fact that these kids have access to magical costumes that transform them into a group of eclectic power rangers. Why would I be annoyed at how convenient this door is inside of a game with candy ceiling monsters as a plot driver? While skipping ahead a little bit, you finally arrive in the third and final area, Fall Valley, after defeating Mextel, a bulldozer-driving monster. See, this is what I'm talking about. 
I'm annoyed at the gate location and I just beat up a monster daylighting as a piece of construction equipment. Well, when you arrive in Fall Valley, you once again have lost access to your costumes and you have to steal them back from the birdmen by seducing them with french fry smells and gain access to the fair that's happening nearby. After you gain access to the fair, it is back to business as usual like the two previous areas. Collect the candy from the houses, have a chat with Sally, purchase some battle stamps, and continue to bob for apples at an Olympic level. At the end of Fall Valley, you finally catch up to Dorsilla, and it's time to show this baddie who is the true costume-wearing, candy-eating conqueror. It's us. Before the battle begins, we learn that Dorsilla plans to take Reynold and us back through a magic portal to a world where they will be given to Big Bones to satisfy her debt and therefore let her become a queen. The battle with Dorsilla can be challenging if you don't come prepared, as she can split herself into three, dealing more damage, and trap one of your characters in a cage, leaving that character unable to heal or fight until you free them. After the battle, a sad and defeated Dorsilla warns you to leave her alone, but of course, we're not going to do that. And after I saved my game, like all knowledgeable and fearful RPGs do after a boss battle, she summons Big Bones to aid her in defeating you. However, her plan does go south when Big Bones learns of her plans to double cross him. This, however, does not stop the giant skeleton from his desire to eat the kids. Big Bones has a number of AoE attacks that hit hard, which makes him a dangerous foe. I was defeated once in battle this entire game, and it was during my first encounter with this boss. Make sure you come to this battle ready to heal and revive your characters if needed. After some time, victory will be yours, Reynold will be saved, and the town children will rejoice as you return all of their stolen candy. All in all, I enjoyed my time with Cosm Quest. It's small in stature compared to most RPGs, but it offered a fun battle system and a silly story that made me chuckle. I mean, there is an Arrested Development reference. If you're looking for a smaller RPG to fill up your time for a week, or a single play session for those of you that have discovered how to order food directly to your doorstep through the power of modern technology, then I would check it out. But if you are extremely put off by some minor repetition of tasks, or you just hate kids so much that you wouldn't dare play as one in a video game, then maybe steer clear. And with that, I thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys sometime in the future for another video about games or something. But until then, keep your sword sharp.